Arriving at Phuket Airport, you can already see you're on a paradise island. This is your first step to a holiday of a lifetime. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Burgers, beers, boys, done. Raw and cocktail. Or where the nightmares begin. That flu yesterday. I've missed my flight. So not good. It's where cultural differences uh, and the language barrier sorry. We don't need to go to the hospital. can trip up even the most experienced traveller. We are not allowed to stay here anymore. We would have to go to Bali. And remind you you're thousands of miles from home. I'm going home tomorrow. But you're in safe hands as the airport staff are just waiting to solve your problems. Welcome. I get going to be another busy day for us. You've made me a fighter all the time. <laughs> So put your seat back and tray tables in the upright position as we arrive inside Phuket Airport. Every year, over 150,000 Brits find themselves getting injured abroad. These two are leaving to go home to Canada and have fallen foul of the country's infamous road rash, a.k.a. the Thailand tattoo. So we got into a motorbike accident. Um, we were in our, in our lane, basically, and a pickup truck just turned left without warning and came yeah. over. Road traffic injuries are a common sight at Phuket Airport. And what a surprise, it's usually under 25-year-olds on motorbikes. So I lost a toenail, I lost some uh, soft tissue. Uh, yeah, face, uh, both hands, but we're alive. We're still good. <laughs> Pretty much ruined our vacation. We couldn't go to the beach anymore. Couldn't get sand in our wounds. I'm, I'm a drummer, so I would need to place a stick right here, so I'm going to have to wait a while to play drums again. Well, less face planting into tarmac at speed would, would help with that. And Marco had health issues even before the accident. He went to the bathroom. He was going to the bathroom a lot. And uh, I just hear a huge bang. Yeah, so I fainted. He fainted and, on uh, the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get used and to the heat and uh, everything, got dehydrated. This is the first time I'm out of North America. Could be lost as well if you carry on like this. And he gets banged up, complete, look at that, eh? Complete opposite side of the planet, and this, all this <laughs> happens. We got injured about three days ago, and we haven't done anything since. And that's exactly why this airport have their very own army of medics, fire officers and engineers keeping you safe. Phuket International is not just an airport, it's like a mini city in itself. With 3,000 staff and nearly 30,000 passengers a day walking through its doors, the airport needs to function independently to the outside world. With maintenance, catering and security staff, the airport also has its very own emergency services, and this week they're all being tested on their emergency response. So that's the airport's fire department and the medical centre, primed and ready more so than ever to spring to action. And it's Dr Sutsuni heading up the medical centre, assisted by her team of nurses, who are all primed and ready for the test. This test happens like once a year, and in the past, we never failed. And it's a lot of pressure because we never failed, and this is my first time, but I'm doing my best to pass this test. When there are real cases, I don't get too nervous because I, I know my team, I trust them. However, the clinic is open for business as usual, and their first real patient has shown up in the shape of Anthony from Norwich, who fainted just before boarding his flight home. I, I've been not quite right for a few days. I had some bug. I had, a, I had a temperature, and uh, we've been standing up for a while, waiting to board, and I just fainted. Everyone was sort of standing around, nurses just came out of nowhere. And they took me here by ambulance. Yeah, you couldn't, couldn't fault it. With Thailand's hot temperatures and exotic foods, dehydration and upset stomachs are common complaints at the airport medical centre. And it's Dr Sutsuni's responsibility to make sure everything is OK. First, we have to make a survey, the primary survey on the patient to see if they are fully conscious. We can bring them back to our clinic. But if we evaluate and then they need an emergency or maybe an advanced life support, then we transfer them to the hospital. 
Thankfully, Anthony's situation was nowhere near that serious. In case that we have, we can bring them back to our clinic and we will evaluate how long we will take. For example, maybe 30 minutes or maybe one hour. And if we can finish everything in time, we have given the certificate that they are fit to fly. Any passenger taken ill at the airport will need to be medically signed off before boarding a flight. So after 30 minutes at the clinic, Anthony is given the all clear by Dr. Sutsuni. When there's a patient, they will contact the airline first about how they can help. Well, because of my fainting, obviously I missed the flight and we had to unload all our baggage. And that was done for us. Then they took my wife back to the sales counter to issue new tickets on the next flight. But it's brilliant treatment, I must say, it's absolutely brilliant. So, although it was an unpleasant experience for Anthony, Thai Airways and the medical staff have made it as painless as possible. We catch up with Dr. Sutsuni later to see whether she makes the grade in the annual medical response test, which no one has failed before. My heart is pumping very fast, <laughs> so excited and nervous, yes. And whilst the airport medical centre takes care of all passengers and staff, Phuket International also sees people arriving for planned medical treatments like Ebony, a young mother of three from Brisbane, Australia. It's just the start of a new beginning. I've had three kids and your body goes through torture going through all of that. So I'm coming for cosmetic surgery. I'm getting my boobs done. And this surgery would just be about me and it'd be the start of all things positive for my self-esteem and for me going forward. But it would seem the road to high self-esteem comes in stages. I came two years ago to Thailand and I got the procedure done then and they said that after 12 months I could come back. It's been two years but I've come back. I could have gone back to Brisbane to do the second procedure but I chose to come back to Thailand again because the hospitals are five star here. The first time I came to Thailand I had a really good experience. The staff was wonderful, the nurses, the doctors were all really great. Approximately 5,000 women a year come to Thailand for breast augmentation, making this the most popular plastic surgery procedure in Thailand. Probably the biggest thing that I was scared about is coming on my own. Last time I came with somebody and it was great, and that was what I was nervous about this morning was coming here. But I know that I'm in good hands and I'll be okay. I'm feeling really tired after a big flight, I'm wanting just to get to the hotel and have a sleep and get myself prepared so I can yeah, wake up fresh and ready for my surgery. This will just be the final thing that gets me onto my new chapter in life. With world-class hospitals and some of the top plastic surgeons in Thailand, Phuket alone saw thousands of Brits fly in for procedures last year. And it's women and men like Ebony in need of a little help that visit the island for a quick nip and tuck. I'm feeling pretty good today. I'm obviously nervous um, and excited and, yeah, mostly excited. But I'm sure just before they push me in, the nerves will kick in and I'll feel like running. <laughs> Hello. Hey, nice to meet you again. Early period after surgery, you may have look nice, big breasts <laughs> compared with your body. We'll be catching up with Ebony later as she prepares to go under the knife Thai style. As Thailand's third largest airport and with up to 80 flights landing and taking off every day, Phuket International's operations officers, Dong and Top, are part of a 24-hour team responsible for keeping all things on the airfield running smoothly and, more importantly, running safely. And today is no different as they patrol the air side of the airport. We need to take care of everything about air side safety. Things that can impact my day can be weather, it can be passenger, it can be the operation of those airlines. With just one runway serving the airport, Dong and Top are constantly on the lookout for anything on the airfield that could cause any issue for the airport. We're inspecting our area, which is air side. We look for everything, look for some object is where it's not supposed to be, so we just, you know, collect it. We call it FOD, stands for Foreign Object Debris or Foreign Object Damage, which is some object that can make a damage uh, to aircrafts. We need to make sure that um, everything is clear, especially about the area that airplanes will pass or park. We just found a tag 
from one passenger. Carl is from Sweden. So we just collect you know, stuff that could be dangerous for aircraft. It may look like insignificant litter, but these small bits of debris on the tarmac, like the luggage tag belonging to Carl from Sweden, could prove catastrophic if it were to hit a delicate jet engine. Something that can cause a problem can be very small, that can damage aircraft. So their vigilance is not only saving airlines hundreds of thousands of pounds in repairs, but also saving thousands of lives. Airplanes are very sensitive. And um, the safety about airplane is number one, is the first priority. So the small stuff like this is not exceptional. You know, it could be a little scratch, but that scratch can cause a lot of lives. Backish tag. So with the eagle-eyed Top and Dong working hard to reduce the risk of an emergency on the airfield, it's the fire department's job to be ready to deal with any emergencies when they do occur. And today, it's Station Officer Nars' responsibility. I look after the aircraft firefighting and see rescue. Our responsibility uh, is eight kilometer from the reference point. The airways runway starts where the beach ends, so Nars' team are also trained in sea rescue in case a plane ends up in the ocean for one reason or another. So we have to prepare for aircraft accident on land and on water. So we have to do water rescue training too. Because the accident will happen mostly when the planes landing or take off. Today, though, the team are flying into action as they're tested on their response times to a big old runway fire emergency. With the firefighting, we have to be ready to do everything. As they speed down the runway, off they go to the practice rescue. And we find out later in the show if it goes off with a bang. As one of the world's top destinations for medical tourism, Thailand's plastic surgery industry is on the rise. Please turn left. And today, it's the moment of truth for Australian Ebony, who is receiving the second of her two-stage breast enlargements having waited two years since her first right. op. So originally I came um, because I had just had three kids and had been breastfeeding them for a very long time. Um, there was not much left and we had finished having our kids and I'd always said like once we finish having kids then I'm turning my focus to myself and fixing up bits that had been ruined by the kids. I don't know, you lose all your self-confidence and I, you know, I, I live in Brisbane, so it's hot and we're in the beach and we're in summer gear all the time and it just makes me feel super confident and happy. Having originally visited Phuket Plastic Surgery Institute two years ago, Ebony's breast augmentation had been planned in two stages, but with general life getting in the way, her new look is now long overdue. Okay, two years. Okay, we do our previous breast augmentation. Yeah. Okay, uh, recent photos of your breast look nice. Yeah. Okay, and today you ask for a bigger implant. Yes. It's possible, okay? I need to check your pocket first, and then I will estimate the proper size of implant for you and discuss with you about the size which you prefer. <laughs> And for the revision surgery, normally we can increase around 100 to 150 cc from previous size, okay? Uh, normally, for the patient ask for more than 150 from previous implant, I need to check with the internal sizer to make sure it's still safe for patient. Ebony is looking to go up two cup sizes, but it's down to the doctor to make sure the size is suitable and safe for her. I will estimate the size of implant according to the patient breast dimension and make sure not too big because with a big implant it will increase the list of the complications. At the start of her surgeries, Ebony was an A cup and is currently a C. She dreams of being an E cup, but even before the doctor can see the actual space inside her breast, she is determined to get as large an implant as possible. Can I go bigger than this one? 
bigger than this. Okay, add up 200 cc. Bigger? <laughs> okay, 250. Now it's about 600 cc. Yeah, this one's better. I feel good now because I feel like it's the size that it was after, so I'm happy. Dr. San Guancha won't know how large he can go until Ebony goes under the knife, but he assures her that he'll go for the biggest implants possible. I will try with 550, 600, and I will do it as big as possible. Yeah. Surgery will start around 11, I will see you again. So, as Ebony goes through the final bits of paperwork for the surgery, she's excited about seeing her new look, but also about getting some downtime. I'm looking forward to getting put to sleep and having a rest, but I'm sure that anyone who's a mum and works can relate to wanting to have a little bit of downtime. In arrivals, we find American Arushi and Australian Krishna, currently in a long-distance relationship, but rendezvousing in Phuket. I flew in from Mumbai. And I flew in from Omdabad to here. We know each other from a study abroad experience we had in Munich. And then we started dating. But the last time we saw each other was last Christmas. Yeah, he got a beard now and longer hair. <laughs> as soon as you remove the long distance part, it's, it's a fine relationship. Yeah, yeah. And these yeah. two young lovebirds seem to be totally in sync, on the same page, singing from the same hymn sheet, totally up for exactly the same holiday. I want to do a little bit of thrill seeking, if I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I recently almost drowned. So <laughs> <laughs> like back in Munich, yes. and I'm like, I, I don't think I want to relive that experience. So I'm still negotiating the terms <laughs> there, but I was hoping at the beginning for bungee jumping, but that seems off the list. You can do it. No, but that's not fair. That's not fun. <laughs> um, oh, he's going to make me do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see him with like beads in his hair. You just want me to be like a hippie. Pretty much. <laughs> Real seeking and safe. Yeah. Maybe. OK, so maybe there's a need for some discussion here, but whatever they come up with, I've got the feeling there'll be a story to tell at the end of their trip. <laughs> and with that slightly crazed laugh, it's obvious which of them is excited about the bungee jump. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Unfortunately, some passengers leave the island having sought medical assistance during their stay following a good old holiday mishap. So I cut my foot uh, when I was standing on a rock yesterday. It stopped bleeding about 10 minutes after, but this morning the wound wouldn't close. I'm deciding whether or not I'm gonna keep traveling. So it's off to the clinic for a checkup for this one. Someone who pretty much started her trip in a medical clinic is Canadian Ashley who is travelling with her boyfriend, Sean. We went to uh, Monkey Beach in Kobe B, and uh, it gets a little bit crazy there with all the tourists, so we were kind of standing back, trying to stay out of all the craziness, and a monkey ended up coming up and biting us anyway, so, or yeah. biting me, so that was fun. And... Yeah, yeah, by the looks of it, boyfriend Sean was obviously very sympathetic at the time. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So that was when it first happened. It was uh, pretty raw. Uh, on my leg right there. It's not very impressive anymore. It's been a month. When it first happened, it was like the all whole thing was up black there. and blue. Yeah. You got to go to the hospital fairly quick because if you get rabies, it can be fatal in, in humans. Yeah, rabies, you say, Sean. Nothing dangerous then. The first day I had seven injections, so that way it doesn't it doesn't spread and get into your brain and kill you. The injection fluid was like that so much. much. It was fluid. a tube like this. Oh. It was huge. It just really painful. The shot was way worse than the monkey bite, actually. Sean is really loving all of this massive injection chat. And then I had to take nine pills a day for three weeks. Yeah. And in that three weeks, I had three more shots. Didn't ruin our trip, though. Oh, what a surprise. And are you sure that Ashley felt the same with her bruised monkey-eaten leg? Stuff happens and you just yeah. have to keep going. Well, oh. she broke her leg on a trip once and it didn't stop us, so yeah. what's a monkey bite? Well, twice. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Hang on, two broken legs on past holidays. OK, Sean, monkey bite, nothing. The arrivals hall at Phuket International sees passengers arriving from 36 destinations every day. And today, it's hosting a reunion of old school friends now living all over the world. 
We are actually all here to celebrate this gentleman getting married in about three or four months from now. It's the last big party being single. We call it a bachelor party in North America. I think stag party the rest of the world. Uh, we're here to make a lot of bad decisions and have a lot of good fun. The group all studied with Aki, the stag, either at uni or high school in Beijing, and they've all traveled to Phuket to give him a proper send-off into married life. It's amazing. I mean, some of them I haven't seen for four years, five years, and it's just the same. So I flew in from Seattle. I came in from New York. So Leo and myself, we came from Beijing. I don't know what day it is or what time it is. <laughs> I know I'm in Phuket. That's all I need to know. I got my mates right here. It's a, it's a stack party, and that's what we're here for. Whilst waiting outside the airport for one more pal, the boys' thoughts turned to important planning for the week ahead. I was just planning the, the, the vest. I've got a, a pink bow tie, and I've just discovered that Gavin is very upset about the fact that it's a clip bow tie. I'm sorry. You're better than that, Aki. This is all I've been able to think about for the last month or so. Thailand, my mates from high school, celebrating like the next step in, in, in life. <laughs> Finally, the boys spot a familiar face. Matthew, come here, buddy! <laughs> Matt, the best man, has arrived from Australia. Don't act like you're not happy come to see now. us. How about a hug? How about a smile? Yeah. Honestly, any time this group of friends from high school get together, it's it's like no time has passed. Uh, uh, Matt, who was our last person to come in, is our host. So uh, I, I just can't wait to see what, what he's going to enjoy the store for us. Yeah, a lot of organizing. I spent a lot of time doing this one. <laughs> it's cheap, it's affordable, and it's just fun. So it's the ideal place for a bachelor party. So with the Fab Five finally all together, it's off to get the stag week started. At the airport medical center, Dr. Sutsuni is gearing up for another busy day. Each month, her clinic sees an average of 150 passengers who need sterilizing, bandaging, or signing off to fly home. But the steady flow of sick passengers and staff is a welcome change to her former job. I've been working in the hospital before. I was working in the emergency room. In one day, I think I have to deal with many patients, maybe 100. So every time we have to be prepared. So Dr. Sutsuni is well used to a fast-paced work environment, which stands her in good stead as the airport is in the midst of a week of tests across all of its emergency services. And the medical center is no exception. And it's making everyone just a little bit jittery. We are all nervous, not only me, the doctor, but nurses and also driver. They're also nervous. So we just have to focus. We have to have a good communication. So it all comes down to this phone. When it rings, the test begins, and the team will have to spring into action. We don't know where it's going to happen. Someone will just call inside our clinic, and they will tell us about the case. After that, we will notify our medical team, which include one doctor, two nurses, and one di driver. They want to see how we perform, how fast we can get to the patient, and how fast the patient can get access from the medical team. Usually, in our airport, it's within seven minutes. All the cases must be within seven minutes, yes. While speed is a huge part of the test, the team need to take numerous other factors into consideration to pass. It's not just saving the patient's life, but we have to consider having many, many things besides us, such as how to talk to the patient. There will be a checklist and a checkpoint that we pass this one and this one, this one. But it's not just the humans who have to be fit and well. Every year, Phuket International Airport sees 2,000 domestic pets fly off to new homes or, quite simply, off on holiday. All must be deemed medically fit to fly, just like their human counterparts. And today, Tanya from Sweden is flying off to Norway with her beloved pets, Bella, Zelda and Coco. I have been here in Phuket for the last one year for holiday purpose. And now I'm on my way to Norway, where my husband works. Tanya rescued Zelda and Coco from a shelter while recently traveling in Malaysia. And now they've become much loved members of the family. So leaving them behind is not an option. Every time I walk and I see a stray, I want to take them in my arms and bring them home. All creatures should have good lives. But flying animals around the world isn't easy. And Tanya has had to ensure her pets are healthy enough to fly. Oh, it's a long process. 
first of all, you have to get them vaccinated. But then you have to have the blood test to, that shows that they are resistant to rabies. And you have to wait three months to take the dogs out of the country. After a second health check the day before the flight, the airport can finally issue a travel certificate for the dogs. They have to have their, uh, her own passport, but it's more um, regarding the vaccinations. It's taken Tanya and her furry family an hour to check in, but now she's worried about how they'll cope during the flight. It's the first time we are travelling with the two uh, stray dogs, so I don't know how they react on this when they get into the airplane. I don't know whether they are in the cargo, in the luggage department. But she's prepared her pets as best she can. Before we went uh, to the airport with a taxi, we had them to, uh, to pee and poop and what else they need to do <laughs> before take off. So now they should be OK uh, until we reach Norway tomorrow. So with bladders empty, this canine trio are all set for the flight. And a big culture shock. They love to lie and dazzle in the, in the sun every day. Even though the sun is burning, they love it. <laughs> So it would be a big difference for them to go to Norway, where it's winter right now. It's uh, around zero degrees. I think I will have to get jumpers and small shoes. Fun times, boys. You're getting a whole new Norwegian wardrobe. So one hour <laughs> after the start. No stress, no stress. But with the check-in done and dusted, Tanya still has the agony of saying goodbye yet to come. Out of the side of the runway, Nar, the airport's head of emergency response, and his team are responding to the emergency drill of a plane crash. Today we will practice about firefighting, and now uh, they are prepare the firefighting equipment. This is obviously a practice run with no plane. However, the fire they're about to fight is very real and very intense, burning ferociously and not to be messed with. We have an aircraft crash with fire and there are some uh, casualties, some people injured. The crew not only have to deal with the fire, but they also need to tend to the injured passengers located around the drill site. The crew will go down the track and take uh, two headlights for the operation to cover and open the way for the passenger and crew to evacuation. So uh, we have two teams. One team is open the way and the one team is cover the other team. So whilst the first host team is tackling the main blaze, a second team provides critical backup to keep the first team and escaping passengers safe at all times. They have to fight with the uh, temperature about 10,000 degrees Celsius. The protection uh, equipment or PPE uh, is protect them from the heat and they can go closer to the fire. Which means with such extreme temperatures being emitted from the jet fuel fire, the crew's PPE or personal protection equipment is vital. Team is very important in the operation because in the real situation, we have only one commander but commander cannot tell everyone for everything, so they have to know what they will do to be sure that when we have accident, they can do their job the best. And all of this is happening at the end of the airport's very busy single runway. I hope the passengers on these flights know it's a training exercise, because that's the last thing you want to see as you take off. Thailand's medical tourism is growing at a rate of almost 20% annually, making the industry worth a staggering billion pounds a year. Today, Ebony from Australia is getting her second breast implant surgery in Phuket, and she hopes to finally get the body she's always wanted. The, the number of patients who come is growing year by year, year by year. Most of our client here is foreigner, probably around 90% of our customer here. Dr. Kunaporn is the director of the Phuket Plastic Surgery Institute, where Ebony is having her surgery. Uh, I always tell my colleague that this is our privilege to have a license to cut, to treat the patient by using the scalpel on the knife. The quality of service, the quality of surgery, the outcome is 
as good or even better than what they got from their home country. We always think that they might be our mom, our sister, uh, our brother, our friends, uh, that we need to do the best for them. And as Ebony's surgery finishes, Dr. Sangantua is very pleased. The operation went well, and we think Ebony will be happy with her new breast. So as she heads into recovery, she'll find out soon if she's happy with the results. At the medical centre, Dr. Sutsuni is playing the waiting game. Like all the emergency services, the medical centre is being tested this week. The only thing they don't know is when that test will happen. There is a test. I have to pass the test. But in order to pass it, the doc needs this phone to ring. Still waiting for the call, but I don't know. As they say, doc, patience is a virtue. Yep, this could be it. When you hear the beautiful rain, we are all excited. <laughs> but, you know, wrong number. Oh, close, but no cigar. Just a bit frustrating. My heart is pumping very fast. <laughs> so excited and nervous, yes. But she's remaining confident. And I'm sure that I'm going to pass it. <laughs> Up in departures and away from the pressures of tests, Argentinian Julian is heading home, but with a new scar to remind him of his trip. Oh, there, yeah. I was on the beach. I was walking alone and cute with, I don't know which was it, but maybe a glass. Yeah, I lost a lot of blood. Unfortunately, his trip to hospital wasn't exactly relaxing either. Very difficult to me because I, lot, I feel very pain when they they had to clean into my foot, so yeah, I feel pain. <laughs> Julian's borrowed a wheelchair from the airport's information desk in exchange for his passport, so he best not nick it. Now I am with my new chair. <laughs> when I use the wheelchair, I have to give my passport to the people, and then they give me the wheelchair. But it's the long flight home that's now weighing on Julian's mind. I have 35 hours in total to go to my country, to Argentina, so it will be a long, long, long travel for me. So, after a quick change and a zhuzh of the hat hair, Julian heads off to get his passport back and get checked in. Very easy information. Please wait for a moment. When they come, I will return the passport to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Oh. Oh, so thank you. you. OK, thank you so much. OK, see you. And with passport in hand, the airline will now get him all the way to his seat on the flight, and then just a matter of his long 35-hour journey home to Argentina. Airside at the airport, NAS firefighters are the first on the scene at any aircraft emergency. Today, they are taking part in a drill for an emergency response, responding to a simulated air crash on the runway, but with a very real fire. And it's more than just flames that the team has to tackle. Our first priority is uh, to take the passenger uh, out of the accident site immediately. Actors are playing the injured passengers, but the fire crew have to react as if this situation is real, and it's down to them to initially medically assess and treat passengers before getting them out of harm's way. Rescuer take the casualty to the safety zone and then send them to the medical team. We rescue people. I think that's a very good thing. Yeah, you're not wrong, now. And with the casualties handed over to the medics, the firefighters return to tackling the blaze. Airside at the airport, the firefighters' drill has been completed successfully and fire station officer Na is very pleased with his team. We practice like this every three months. I'm very proud of them. They work hard. The firefighter team, our training, make 
we look good. <laughs> yeah. Because Na knows if his team looks good, he looks good. And with their life-saving skills proven and tested, the team are primed for action. Over at the medical centre, the team is still waiting for their impromptu drill to start. And Dr. Sutsuni is like a coiled spring, ready for action. She's even got her medical kit ready to go. They have been waiting this morning until now, so, but it didn't happen. So I was nervous all day and it didn't happen. But there's still time. My, my shift will be over in 20 minutes, so maybe at 4.59 they might give me a call. <laughs> Anything could happen at any time. I mean, until five. So, as the last few minutes of her work day tick by, Dr. Sutsuni can breathe a sigh of relief and finally go home and relax. Oh, yes, I'm relieved because it didn't happen. And it's, if, even if it happened after five o'clock, it's not in my shift already, so... <sighs> Happy. <laughs> yeah. That's right, someone else's problem now. So, probably it might happen tonight at any time, maybe midnight. It will be a big surprise for them. I mean, for them, not for me. Yeah, so going home now. All right, don't rub it in. But there goes one very relieved doctor. Back at PPSI, it's the morning after Ebony's breast implant surgery and she's recovering well. I'm fine. I can, like, touch and wave around. And I can just hear these weird, like, squishing sounds. Like, you know, his stomach kind of grumbles and it makes, like, squelching sounds. I can hear those every now and then. I've heard it's totally normal, though. It's just, like, little bubbles around there just getting rid of. <laughs> Despite her noisy new breasts, she's feeling upbeat. But has her surgeon revealed the new size? He came in and, like, whispered in my ear. And he was like, I gave you 600. And I was like, yes. I think we might have fist pumped. <laughs> Good morning, Good Bonnie. Good morning. And yep. uh, use a 600cc implant yep. at your request, OK? Her cups now runneth over, and she can't wait to show off her new figure whilst recovering on Paquette's sunny beaches. It's been less than 24 hours since the bachelor party boys arrived in Phuket. All right, you guys ready? Yeah, no, yeah. Let's do this. I'll, I'll, grab, I'll grab the bag. And it looks like they've started their celebrations with a splash. <laughs> but things haven't gone completely to plan, and sadly, Gavin has to watch from the sidelines. <laughs> um, I got a Thailand tattoo. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what it is, it's when you get a little bit of road rash uh, from falling off your scooter. Coming back from breakfast, coming up the hill, and I had to slam all my brakes, and... <laughs> oh! That's how you hurt yourself, right there. Luckily, thank God, I was wearing a helmet, kept the face pretty. I think tomorrow I'll probably be a bit more sore. I had a lot of adrenaline when it did happen. Go, Leo! Go, Leo! Go, Leo! Yeah, Lee will definitely be feeling that in the morning. Going, going, gone! But like any good stag party, the boys aren't going to let Gavin's prang get in the way of their fun. All is well, all is going well, and still more to come. I mean, guys flew down across the world to see me, um, celebrate this special event. I would do anything for them. Quite a few of them are starting to get married, have kids, so that's sort of making it harder to, to meet up. So when we do get the chance, it's great. Just like the song says, right, the boys, the boys are back in town and, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just the boys, it's family. And with one Thailand tattoo between the five of them, let's just hope they get the groom back in time for the wedding. And from one banged-up American to another, over at Departures, we see the return of thrill-seeking Krishna and his cautious girlfriend, Arushi. But by the looks of her, it seems like it was more spills than thrills. So we were doing activity after activity, just doing like snorkeling. Uh, so we rented out a motorcycle, which was great, because I love that. Uh, and he likes the speed too much. Unfortunately, well... I was uh, collateral. Uh... <laughs> and straight away, we all know what's happened here. It was like a ditch, and it was like a, the ditch turned, and I accidentally entered the ditch. But I wasn't turning at the same rate, and it rained the night before. And so like I was turning at a different rate than the ditch was turning, and so the bike lost control. 
Uh, and the weird thing was, I was in front and like, but she got injured way more than me. <laughs> I got like two open wounds. The rest are just scratches. The thing with these is that you have to like open them up every single day and you have to like sterilize it and rewrap it. And uh, you know how like scabs form. So you rip off the scab every single time and it just hurts. And I have really, really low pain tolerance. He's a big baby. <laughs> Krishna, are you having a laugh? There's not a scratch on you. OK, at the end there. I think it's the very yeah, end. Yeah, go air. Thankfully, a uh, car came by, so we managed to take her to the hospital. And I, think I fine. finally got you to hitchhike. Yeah, that's true. That's I've been true. wanting him to hitchhike for a really long time, and he's like, that's unsafe. But we did it. Yeah. Something good came out of this. Um, I'm with Krishna on the hitchhiking front, but before you get on another bike with him, Arushi, don't. Also in departures is Tanya, who's with her three pets, Bella, Zelda and Coco, who've checked in and are ready for their trip to their new home in Norway. We're heading to the luggage drop-off now. Yes. And I have two handsome guys to help me. I'm travelling by myself. It is a bit stressful. And with three awkward crates to lug about, I can see why. I try to give them water to drink so they not dehydrate, but they don't want to have anything. And I just want the, the dogs to be OK when we are on the other side of this journey. Obviously anxious and worried about being separated from her three precious pets, Tanya is now faced with the heart-wrenching moment of having to say goodbye to them until they reach Oslo in just over 17 hours' time. because I'm a little scared that they will not reach Oslo. Um, yeah, it's just my fear. I think they will, of course they will do that, but it's just my fear. With Bella, Zelda and Coco through security, they are taken through and passed on to the ground crew to board the plane. So I told them to behave good and to reach Oslo in good manners. But after the long journey, Tanya and her pets get to start a whole new life together in Norway. <laughs>